In this video we're going to have a look at a convention used when programming in Python that achieves something similar to data hiding. Python does not have any keywords such as private. Python does not have a true mechanism for hiding data attributes, in other words data fields, using keywords similar to private. However, Python does have a convention for data hiding. Now by a convention we mean something that we can all follow if we want to follow this particular convention. We've already seen this computer program earlier in the playlist and we can see we have this class called account and within the definition of this particular class we have the initialization method, we have the credit method and we have the debit method. Here we create an instance of the class and here we gain access to this particular data field within the object and here we gain access to this particular data field within the object. When the program runs this is the output we would get. What I would like to do now however is to say well let's have a look at the self dot balance data field the one I'm going to point to now. Now this particular data field is accessible directly now we've talked about why data hiding might be useful. Now within Python there is no true mechanism for allowing data hiding using keywords such as private that are used in other programming languages. What we can do, we can use a convention. Now this convention will hide this particular data field from the outside world and it is really a convention, it's not supported directly by the language using keywords such as private and by a convention is something that all Python programmers can actually follow. What I want to do now if you keep your eye on the position of the arrow I'm going to alter the program in the following way and you can see here that I have put a rotating oval and it is effectively highlighting two underscores so I've now got self full stop two underscores balance. So I've replaced the self dot balance with self dot two underscores balance. Now this can kind of act as data hiding. What it tells me as a computer programmer is look, please do not access this particular variable. But Python goes one step further and it'll cause us an issue if we try to access this particular variable directly as we'll see in a moment. Now because I've altered the name of this data field to double underscore balance you can see here I've done the same thing. I've had to alter the balance that was in these positions i.e. it was self dot balance to self dot double underscore balance otherwise the code wouldn't function. The credit and the debit methods would not have the access to the balance field, the double underscore balance data field. Now when this program actually executes this is the output we will get and you can see that it has crashed. Now the question is why is it crashed? Well let's have a look at here. It says account object has no attribute double underscore balance. Now that's because when I have attempted to use this message here to gain access to this data field, Python has come back and says, look, I don't have an attribute that's double underscore balance. In other words, this data field appears to have been hidden. And to all intents and purposes, it has been hidden. We can therefore see that this particular message has tried to gain access to this particular data field here within the instance of this particular class. And we saw that it was not allowed in the sense that we got an error occurring. So we can put double underscores here to hide this particular data field. Now to go the non-Pythonic way we could say, well, all right then, I'm going to hide my data field using this. But when I want to allow access to this data field, 
I'm going to not use this kind of message here because it doesn't work. I'm going to use one that will go via a method. So the next program here, you can see I've put in this particular getter method, which is not something Python programmers encourage you to use. But your software house might prefer this approach because it's come from different programming languages where lots of their designs have been implemented on the assumption that getters and setters are the way to go forward when writing object oriented code because perhaps it matches their UML artifacts better. By UML I mean their design artifacts, the unified modeling language design artifacts. Now here you can see that what I've got is customer full stop get balance. Now this particular message will cause this to execute and this particular method returns self dot double underscore balance. Now does this work? Well let's run it and see what we will get as the output. And you can see yes it does because we can see that the balance has been output here, here, here and here as you would expect from these four calls here. So we can hide using these double underscores and use a getter to gain access to the data field that we decided to hide. Let's consider this computer program, which is a slight amendment to the one we've just been discussing. And I'll come on to the amendments in a moment. But first of all, I want to have a look at this data field, self dot double underscore balance. Now, I am saying that is a way in which we can hide this particular data field. If I look at this data field, it's self dot name. Well, I have no double underscore there, so I'm allowing this to be accessible, directly accessible. So if I come down here to this particular line, we can see that Rita Hartley has been assigned to name of this instance. So Rita Hartley will appear within this particular data field of the instance, i.e. the object of this particular class. Now on this line, what you can see, I am saying let 1 million be assigned to the double underscore balance of this object. In other words, this particular field of the instance of this class. Now, of course, if this is supposed to be hiding this field, then this program should crash because down here I'm saying let 1 million be given to a hidden data field. And this is a convention in Python, remember this double underscore. So let's see if indeed the program crashes. Well, there's the runtime, and you can see it doesn't crash. So something odd is happening here. You see, this million has been attempted to be assigned to the double underscore balance field. And you may think, oh, well, that must be this particular field here. But if you look at the program output, even though on this line I've assigned a million to this that I thought was hidden, when I go onto this line to print the balance, which I do using this message here, which invokes this method, which returns what I believe to be this field, it returns the 55. Ignoring the fact that on this line, I assigned 1 million to what I thought was a hidden data field. Now let's be clear here. The double underscore balance field is a hidden data field. What's happened on this particular line is the 1 million has been given to another data field that just appears to be having the same name as the original double underscore balance field that was defined in the class. Now this is because Python is dynamic and it means the object can change during runtime. In other words, I can decide, well, I've got this object that's been defined by the class, but I'm going to give it another data field as the program is executing. What in fact Python does is something called name mangling, which I'm going to discuss later in the playlist. But here, this 1 million is assigned to this particular field, which is different to this field here. 
Now, we as programmers and humans look at this and say, well, this is a bit confusing. We've got two things with the same name. But this data field is not this one here. Now, of course, all this looks a bit odd. The reality is, however, you should be disciplined when you're writing code, regardless of the language you're using. Your software house would set up some principles, some conventions that you should follow. And what Python communities do, they say, look, if I want to hide something, I don't need this word private. I'm going to stick a double underscore in front of it, as you can see here. Now, if that's the case, what you shouldn't do as a Python programmer is then try and assign something to a data field that's got a double underscore in front of it. Forget the fact that this is a different dynamic data field added to the object. It is, but forget that for the moment. The point is, you should have some software engineering discipline in writing code. Do not do this. Do not go to an instance of a class and try and access fields that have this double underscore. It's not appropriate. It's not part of the convention. You shouldn't do it. And if you do do it, you get some strange results. Now, of course, if you wish to change the data field of an instance of a class, you can write a setter method to change something that you've hidden using the double underscore. And I've shown that in a previous video. But here again, you need some software engineering discipline. The software house that you work for might say, look, we don't use getters and setters when we write our Python programs. We hide data using the double underscores and we don't allow the use of setters and getters. We have direct access to data fields by not putting the double underscore in front of the names of the data fields. Again, it all comes down to software engineering practice, not really coding practice, not really implementing what the language gives you. It's how you yourself want to write code. Now, the truth is you're going to see Python code written in many different ways because lots of people will come to Python from other languages where setters and getters have always been used and they've got into the habit of using setters and getters. Now, there's a huge debate out there between Python programmers and other programs where they seem to row about this particular point, frankly, ad nauseum. I would not get involved with that. You yourself decide what approach you wish to take and stick to it. That's my view anyhow for what it is worth. Let's try and summarize what we've discussed in this video by looking at this computer program here. Let's look at this particular data field here. You can see it's self full stop double underscore balance. Now that double underscore is there because I wish to use a Python convention to allow me to hide this data field. Now of course this data field is available within these particular methods and you can see it's been used here and here. Now of course I want that to happen because I want to be able to alter the balance using the credit and the debit but I don't want it possible for a message to be sent to an instance of this which will change the balance because if you've got a balance of an account you only really want it to be altered by somebody putting money in the bank or drawing money out of the bank you don't want your code to have a situation whereby somebody within your software team says well i'm just going to add a million pounds to this account and gain direct access to it so there's a reason why you might want to hide the balance field of course there's a case to say, well, although I don't want people to change this field, I might want somebody to know what the balance is. That's why I made a design decision here to use a getter method, even though that's frowned upon by Python programmers. There are other ways to do this, which we'll come on to later in the playlist. When we now go to look at this line, this should be outlawed, because essentially what's happening here, we are trying to gain access to a hidden data field. Now, because of the dynamic nature of the language, this, in fact, isn't the same data field as this one here. But the thing we need to make sure we do, by all means stick double underscores here and use them in these positions, but when you're trying to use the instance of the class as you're doing on this line, never, ever have a double underscore here. That's a rule. Never do this. 
never try and directly access a double underscore when you're sending what is effectively a message to an instance of this class. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.